Hi, how's it going? So today I thought I would do kind of a fifth grade update. And then as I'm kind of updating everything on what we're currently using, I will kind of discuss my plans for sixth grade. So this is like very, very early ideas and plans I have for sixth grade while I'm going over the fifth grade things because I want to talk about, um, you know, each subject and how that might vary for sixth grade. So hopefully that's interesting or helpful to some of you <laughs> so yeah so let's get started so basically my daughter um is using saxon math and that's um continuing and saxon i don't i don't i don't love it i don't hate it i think it's like a good curriculum for us and yeah so like you know it's just very simple and it kind of takes a while i think i went over so basically, I want to show you guys. So basically, I already talked about this, but in case some of you guys are new or maybe you uh, didn't watch that other video, if if you're um, if you've been subscribed to me, I showed how I, what a uh, change from last year when we were using Saxon Math is. I uh, just decreased the workload that my daughter is doing for like the practice. So in Saxon, you do this like little practice work, uh, like a sheet. Uh, I'm sorry, a page. And so basically that's working out really well. It's going much faster just doing half of the workload. And it's definitely because it was just taking so long for math. So that's working out really great, doing half and half. But yeah, so it's just practicing facts. And then, you know, Saxon math, just to go over it really quick. So we're like, where are we? A oh, little magnetic tab's not in here. So we are... Lesson 74, I believe. So we might have a chance to finish it. I'm not sure by the end of fifth grade. But yeah, so it's going pretty well. She, um, like, she doesn't really complain about it. I mean, she does pretty well with it. And so this, we do, um, one, two, skip a few. <laughs> we do either odds and even for each lesson. So lesson 71 we started skipping the warm-up from the very beginning of the year. I don't know. I just didn't feel like it was necessary for her. And then I main, mainly have her read the new concept. And then I have her do all of the ones that are new for the new concept. And then, so the, um, and then for the mixed practice, we do either even or odd. So that way she's able to not spend so much time on math so we can focus on other subjects. Because it still takes a while. And it was just taking like too long before we were doing odds or even. So yeah, that's what we've been doing um, for math. She does pretty well. Like I don't, I haven't really found with any of the lessons I really had to go back and um, reinforce any of the concepts. I think it's pretty, like it's almost like pretty self-explanatory and she's doing pretty good with it. So Zaxon's going really well. So that's like the first thing that we did at the beginning of the day. And then, so I will say that, so for sixth grade, we're going to go ahead and continue Saxon math. So the next one, whatever it will be, <laughs> um, it's like six, five, that kind of confused me. So I'm like, oh, uh, okay, yeah. So I think like seven, six is maybe what it is. Um, if I'm correct, that's what we'll do next. Okay, so that's math continuing Saxon for sixth grade. And then the first thing she does for language arts is just a simple little planner. And I mainly just have it um have her do she writes a word from a word a day she you know since she's only a kid she doesn't really have much to schedule or plan so and my husband and I keep track of stuff like that for her anyway but I just wanted her to to know how to use a planner and stuff like that so this is working out very well and then I have her read um read a word out loud and then she writes it down. She just writes the word. It's just like, I don't have her write down the definition, but to me, it's just like word recognition, vocabulary expansion. And I like how it correlates with the date because this is a worded day. So yeah, so for February, today when I'm filming this, it's like February 1st. So for February 1st, she wrote blizzard and it just correlates. And so I don't think I'm gonna, can. okay, I, I take that back. I am going to continue doing a book like this for sixth grade. 
I'm actually looking at a variety of books now. So yeah, so I will be doing a similar book. I love this concept for really like a beautiful book and like you learn all these words. So yeah, we're gonna continue this same thing for sixth grade and then I will definitely continue buying her a planner. So this is something we're gonna continue. And then this was just my year of writing. This is really fun. Now, since this is a little writing prompt book, not like a specific curriculum, it doesn't really have, I don't think, another one that's similar, but I will look. And I'm going to be looking for stuff, you know, similar to this for her to use for language art. So I do really like this little book of just these little creative things that you write. And I definitely will be using this. And I'm sorry, not this exact one, of course, because she's going to be finished with it. But so I'm going to look for something similar. I'm going to also look. I know they have, I think, My Year of Art, the same, like, author slash publisher. So I'm going to see what other ones they have. But, yeah, I really like this book. And I would continue something like this for sixth grade. And I'm also going to link everything below for y'all. Okay, so the next thing is... I wanted to do something similar to Draw Right Now, which Draw Right Now, if you're familiar, I used it pretty much kindergarten through, I think, fourth grade it ended. And it's basically just like you you draw and then you copy the sentences. Like, And so I couldn't find anything I liked that was similar, but I, I she really enjoyed that curriculum. So I found this book, I'm sorry, it's like a missing book in our house. We had, the, I bought this really cool book. If you check out my fifth grade video, if you go back on my channel, if you're interested, um, just look at my fifth grade curriculum video, like the first one I made um, for her curriculum for this year, and it will be in there. But it's like a flower book, and it's like how to draw flowers. So that's what she did, and she finished it. She did that in the beginning. And I didn't have her write anything with it. I just wanted her to kind of do like technical drawing. So after she finished the flower book, I kind of just, this, we just kind of started randomly picking books off of our shelf. And that's what we're currently doing. So this was just like a nature book that she picked. And then she kind of got a little bit more, um, oh, she forgot to label that one. She kind of got a little bit more detailed by doing these biographies. Like we have a um, portrait like portrait biography book of these like famous women. She did that. And so I kind of just let her choose. And then now we're at the point where I told her it's kind of taking too long because like if, you, if you've watched, like it's getting more intricate and more intricate. And she, my daughter really likes doing art. And I told her this really wasn't what I planned to do for art. This was more like technical drawing. It's getting, it's starting to take like, like she's like getting really detailed and it's taking longer and longer and longer. So these are like mytho um, mythological women, like goddesses and stuff like that. So I told her she really only has like not that much room left in here. So for the rest of it, I'm just going to have her draw like really simple things like a pencil, a clock, you know, like um, just like kind of things we would find around the house, like everyday objects kind of going back to that simple. But yeah, she's really enjoying this. It's just like a fun little way for her to improve her coordination or dexterity and kind of like look at what she draws like copy work kind of but copy drawing okay so that i don't think i'm going to continue for sixth grade because i was really trying to follow the vibe of draw right now and i don't think it was really successful i don't i don't regret her doing that i think she's having fun but i don't really see it adding anything to our curriculum because we already do art separate and she does a lot of stuff like that in her free time so I think I'm going to let that go. <laughs> like, I loved Draw Right Now, but I think I'm just going to let that go. So I don't think we're going to continue, like, the copy style drawing for sixth grade. Yeah. So for handwriting, let's see. I bought this. I also bought a handwriting from learning, cursive handwriting from Learning Without Tears. Let's see. It came in a kit. I didn't pull it for this video because we didn't start it yet. So... Basically, let me let me do uh, learning without tears first. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so learning without tears. I sad. I was sad to find out that they're not that it ends in fifth grade. Now, if I'm wrong about that, I apologize. But I'm pretty sure I looked recently, and I'm pretty sure it ends in fifth grade. So, this will be our last year with learning without tears, handwriting without tears, learning without tears. 
we've been doing since kindergarten. And so we're really, she, my daughter's really been enjoying this building writers with three different types of writing, narrative, information, and opinion. And she's almost finished this. Like we're already at, I, we also skipped some. Like some of them are kind of redundant, I found. And we, like I had her kind of skip some of them and then focus um, like this. It wanted her to kind of do the same topic twice. So I just had her pick one. So yeah, so some of them we did skip because she already wrote about it. But we should, I should say, let's see. So we've done about 90% of it. And then now we're already at the end. And um, she only has a few pages left. So when she finishes this, I'm going to have her start the cursive handwriting um, from learning without tears so yeah so that's gonna be over really soon and i can't continue it because i don't have it for sixth grade and then this was a blank writing journal that came with the kit that i bought and i basically just write random words for her because it's blank and she just copies them so it's just another way to kind of practice cursive i also have her practice her name her name, like her, her signature in here and like her address, stuff she'd also be writing like on a, like a, a letter, like personal stuff that's not in the other cursive book I'm about to show you guys. So yeah, so this is just like a little bonus that I came with. And then this, we're still, she's still doing the letters. In the beginning, it's just practicing cursive letters. And then it starts to get into the quotes of Aesop's fables. So this would be something I would repurchase something like it for sixth grade. I know it's like, quote, copywork. I know that they have other books, like this one's uh, Aesop Fables. I believe they have like Anne of Green Gables and they have different things. So I actually might go with the same company that I found this on Amazon and just like get another one. And so yeah, so this is just another way for her to practice cursive. And so then she's also going to be doing the learning without tears cursive. And I just really like her getting a lot of cursive. I read it's like really good for like brain development. And like I read that I think some school districts stopped teaching it. But then there are some of I just read some big school district. Another state is like adding cursive back into their curriculum after a long time, maybe like over 10 years or something like that. So I really like her learning cursive and she really enjoys it. So yeah, so I think by the end of fifth grade, she'll have this done because I'm going to maybe have her do a little bit extra so we can finish this. But yeah, so that's handwriting. Okay, continuing with language arts, growing with grammar level five. So we are absolutely going to continue growing with grammar for sixth grade. And I was happy to see that it looks like they have it up until eighth. So... It's going really well. It's really self-explanatory for her. She just reads it, the lesson, and then, you know, it has the corresponding um, little work sheets. And then we check it together usually because I used to check it. See this? It looks like she didn't do anything, but she just underlined. It's like for capital. For, for capitalization, I sometimes tell her you don't have to rewrite it. Just make them, you know, write the lines, the little yeah, so I didn't have her rewrite it, but um, one thing I've changed from fifth to sixth grade and also the younger years was from math and for like, grammar, I have her help me check it or check it by herself because now that I realize she can, she can see what mistakes she made, it's easier for her. You know, when she was younger, I just it was just easier for me to check it myself and I could see if I could correct something, but now that she's getting older and things are getting a little bit more technical, I think it's easy for her to just check it herself or for us to check it together. So yeah, I think she, I really, really like this curriculum. So I'm 100% um, continuing growing with grammar for sixth grade. Okay, so getting to the end of language arts, we do oral reading last. And I just wanna show you guys, so the main thing I bought for fifth, agreed was Aesop's Illustrated Fables but I also bought this and I really didn't know where to fit it in our homeschool then what we figured out is we just started doing it orally uh, reading it together orally and it's basically just you know a world of gratitude how people give things around the world and so we finished it already you know it's like a typical picture book size like 32-ish pages 
32 pages so basically just every day we just together you know read like a page or just like a little section and we took our time and we finished it like a week ago I'm just like how to say thank you in other languages and just about gratitude and things like that so this was our main read aloud for fifth grade and it's working out really well I discussed previously that I really like the idea of doing really short read alouds the older she gets because she's reading so much in her own free time and we really neither one of us really like to read out loud it's just something about it it's just it's like different than just speaking I don't know it's just like it's like where is this out or something so I just um I really like that it's just a really short little fables and so we're about this far and we definitely won't finish it by the end of fifth grade so i'm thinking i'm gonna have to i'm gonna make a decision i haven't made it yet because now i'm kind of out of ideas for sixth grade because this like we've done other short story collections like i've gotten shorter and shorter and shorter with the read alouds and this is like as short as i think you can get <laughs> um other than maybe just doing like quotes or something like that so that's a good idea. See, now I just got the idea. So now I'm thinking maybe get like a, a book of quotes or po go we've done poetry a lot. I kind of removed poetry for um, fifth grade because my daughter didn't really enjoy it. I'm like the poetry person. So I didn't force her to do it for fifth, fifth grade, but I'm always going to keep considering to add poetry back in. So poetry is a consideration continuing this book is an option for sixth grade xing it out just um, not doing any more oral reading um, for language arts for sixth grade is also an option so i'm going to decide between like that between those options but yeah so i but i really like it for fifth grade really it's working well okay so that was it for language arts we pretty much do math and language arts every day monday through thursday um, except on Fridays also now um, continuing I made the change we were doing math only Monday through Thursday in other grades but now we're doing she still does math on Fridays but we don't do language arts on Fridays so after we finish language arts on Mondays and Tuesdays she we do science so I decided uh, to focus on chemistry so I got this book chemistry for curious kids and basically we just read it together and sometimes I'll pull up YouTube videos if I think the topic, you know, is something that I want to expand on in like a video. So, yeah, so we keep it pretty simple. We just read like a few. Sometimes we just read like a two page spread. Sometimes we read more. But just depending like solids, liquids and gases. Yeah, just depending on how kind we're in the mood that day. Usually we read like two to four pages and we just take it kind of slow so that's what we're doing and it's definitely my goal to finish this book I guess we're about halfway done maybe ish let's see i really struggled with science for fifth grade i'm just gonna tell you guys like i really science and history have always been a struggle for us well, not for us like <laughs> i guess like for me so like we're almost halfway done and we definitely will my goal is to definitely finish it by the end of the fifth grade year. So if we have to do more pages, we will. We'll just kind of wait till we get closer to the end of the year. But yeah, so science was really one of those things in history that I've always struggled with creating my either buying a curriculum and it working for us or making my own curriculum. It was easier for me in younger grades. And we just kind of did like units and we didn't really like I don't know, maybe I'm just like overstressing about it or something because like she's getting older and I want to make sure like she's not going to be like behind or something like that. But I have confidence in her, you know, that she like I've already had her do a standardized test in third grade. Now, I will mention this. I'll probably mention it again in a future video, but I do plan on doing another standardized test at the end of fifth grade. So I don't know if I'm going to do like the cat test again, but I want to make sure she's doing like grade level or higher and everything and stuff like that again so yeah so continuing with science this is what we do on mondays and then connecting this on tuesdays we do this so on tuesdays we don't open this book at all 
but she gets this book out and she just um we read the beginning together like we read all the beginning together and then now it's just on each element like it goes through all the elements so then what i have her do is like read this all to herself about the, the element and then we got i have this little graphing notebook and the first thing i had her do was a periodic table just something like for her to just kind of like you know uh, learn a little bit more about it by drawing and reinforcing those uh, words and concepts and things like that and then so this now i'm having her do each individual element so she did hydrogen helium lithium so far and then let's see oh this this page is loose but and let's see she just did carbon so yeah so um so yeah so every tuesday um it's this book and then she has an element to do in this little notebook just like a little thing i kind of added in for chemistry also want to make one comment about chemistry i did buy a bunch of like kits for chemistry none of them we liked we didn't like any of them i really feel like it's chemistry is one of those things that i'm like i personally am not passionate about like I, i'm just like being honest like i'm not a science person i prefer biology over like chemistry physics and stuff like that um I did really bad in high school in physical science too. Like I don't, I'm not, okay. So I really felt like I'm gonna just not worry about the lab stuff. I was like really worried about, I was like, oh my gosh, she needs to do more labs. She needs to do like more interactive stuff. And then I bought all these kits and it's like, we, we did it with like, we started to do things and a lot of them like needed all these ingredients that they didn't come with. The kit didn't come with. And so um, I just didn't really find <clears throat> it was adding anything to, her knowledge of chemistry, like from what I could personally take her. So I found like, I was just gonna do like a literature based type chemistry, um, you know, et cetera, for fifth grade. And then like, she'll know a little bit about it. And then like when, and if she um, takes like a lab, like in high school, cause I'm gonna make, make this quick announcement too. Like, so my daughter and I discussed it and as of now, my daughter does plan to be homeschooled 100% through like eighth grade, but then she's seriously considering, and um, her dad and I are seriously considering um, possibility and probably like the idea of her going to high school. I'm not worried about it. Like I really, and another option would be to take it at a community college. So I know they have like high school, college credit classes and stuff like that. Like, so I'm, I'm not worried about the lab stuff, so yeah. Um, and then, oh yeah, so for sixth grade, we're going back, we're going to do biology. So I want to do, going forward for the rest of middle school, I wanted to do chemistry. That's what we're doing for fifth grade. Physics and then biology and, and focus on those three. Okay, so for physics, I feel kind of weird about physics, like confused about physics because phys we're going to only be able to give her like a very like small kind of literature based like in um introduction to it and that's fine so i'm saving physics for later i was gonna do it for sixth grade but then i'm like you know what i think i want to do biology for two years so it'll be now we're doing chemistry you know um then sixth and seventh grade i want to do biology so sixth grade will be human focusing on the human body but we're still going to be um, they have like the, this book, they have a biology one and they have a physics. So I'm buying both of them. I'm going to buy the biology one and the physics one. So we're going to still read this book for biology for sixth grade. And, but then we're going to focus maybe on the second day, you know, I'm still early planning, but on the second day, we'll probably just focus on the human body. And then for seventh grade, I think we'll focus on like plants and animals, but I still have to like do more research and stuff like that, but yeah. And then so eighth grade, you know, hypothetically, if she's still homeschooled, I give her the option every year. Do you want to go to school? Do you want to be homeschooled? She still wants to be homeschooled for eighth grade. We're going to do physics and it's going to be a very light physics, but that's my plan for middle school science for the rest of the um, years. Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. So history, 
I will say that history is kind of like my least favorite subject so far for fifth grade. That is how how is it going? It's my least favorite subject as far as like the curriculum I picked. I struggled with it. I didn't know what to pick because I wanted to focus on American history. And I got this book, Everything You Need to Is American History. And I will say this. I crave illustrations. I just do. And this book, of course, it's like, you know, note style stuff. Like, you know, it's like very, it has some illustrations, but it's like just very, you know, basic and stuff like that. It has, doesn't have like real photography. I knew that, of course. And it's a very inexpensive book. I think I even got it used for like five bucks or something. But anyway, my, I, some of the chapters, okay, we read through one chapter. So science is Monday, Tuesday. History is um, Wednesday, Thursday. So on Wednesday, I'm sorry, let me take that back. It started off Wednesday and Thursday, but now we're just doing history one day a week. So now we only do this book on Wednesdays. So a lot of the chapters we can finish in one day. We read it orally together, like chapter 15, The War of 1812. I do like that it has some illustrations and it has like the, you know, like it's almost like notebook style, which I think is cool. But I think I just crave a little bit more life in the book, like a little bit more like real because it's history. You know what I mean? Like this is okay for me for some subjects, but... I'm just very, I'm just not feeling it. I'll just be honest. Like, and then it has like a check your knowledge in the back. And so we do that together. We read it together. But like this last chapter we did, chapter 16, it was so long that we divided it. So, yeah. Okay. So this is one of the things I'm on the fence about because like, I don't know how far we'll get by the end of fifth grade. And I have to make the decision of what I want to do because I am going to 100% continue American history for sixth grade. I just don't know what book I'm going to use yet. Now, my daughter finds this book okay. Like, it doesn't bother her. Like, it bothers me. And I'll be honest, history and science, again, aren't like my favorite subjects. So I kind of need a little bit, and I'll say I because... I'm her parent and I'm like with her. Like I'm like sitting there next to her. So if I find the curriculum boring and I'm not motivated to open, like every, I'll just be honest, like every time it's time for history, I'm just like, oh gosh. Like in my head, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just, this book doesn't, it doesn't like inspire me. I don't know. And like, I'm history is not real exciting for me as it is. Like as a, I don't know. I just prefer like language arts, of course. So. I bought, I had a multitude of books that kind of went with this, but honestly, the only one we're really using is this. So basically, once we got to the first president, we just opened this book um, after we read the chapter. We just like open it up and she can see, you know, what the president looked like, what he looked like, and a little bit more information about him. So right now we're only, we're at, we're at James Monroe. That's the latest president we got to. And I just wanted her to um, start learning more about the presidents because literally this is the first time we've even done American history. So, yeah. So we just kind of use these two books together. And that's our main history. And like I said, I don't know. There's not a lot of options for sick, for history. I've, I've, done, I've done curriculums and I'm, I'm through buying curriculums for history and science. I, I like... I've used so many different types of curriculums and it's awesome if they work for you. I think that's great. But for us, I'm too stubborn. I like to use my own books. Not that they don't pick good books, some of them, but I just like to use my own books and I kind of like to go at our own flow and I just don't find that um, prepackaged curriculums really work for us. Now we have used them in the past, but going forward, I don't see myself buying them for history or science. So I always have to do a lot of research finding books. And I've pretty much, there's not many options for American history. I know there's a DK one. I've, I've checked out from the library. Um, yeah. Okay. So on Wednesday, we did history. 
on Thursdays, what we started doing was just geography. I was like, let's just do history in one day. And we do geography on Thursday. So basically, I bought this book, North American Maps. I feel like I'm rambling too much. On it. We, it's basically very, very, very simple. It just has all these different things about North America. Like random facts or events, but yet it just shows you um, geographically where everything is. And I like that. You know, it reinforces in her brain where North America is, what, what countries it's made out of, and just random facts about each um, place. So I like it. It's just very, very simple. I've, it, I've just really simplified geography. And then it doesn't really go with it, but it kind of does. I mean, it's North America, the seven continents by Evan Moore. Now, I started off fifth grade with a lot of Evan Moore. I think I did a video on it. And like, I ended up um, getting donating or selling back, I think selling back to high price books, like almost all of them. But this was one of the ones I kept. And basically, um, I just have her do the two-page spread every day after we just read that little short book. And yeah, so now for sixth grade, I'm also going to just keep it very simple. And I'm, I'm ditching this. It says grades four to six. So I'd, I would have to go with a different continent. What I was planning on doing for sixth grade was going with another one of these um, Evan Moore books and doing a different continent, like probably South America because, you know, we just said North America. But I'm thinking, you know what, there's I'm not we're not even going to have enough time because she's already in fifth grade. We're not even going to have enough time to do all of them. And we did do all the continents when she was younger. Not that she remembers probably. But so I'm thinking I'm not doing this for sixth grade. I'm not going to do a continent book at all, but not that anything's wrong with it or anything like that. I think it's fine. You know, it's just, it's, it's black and white. I, I would prefer color. I knew it was black and white when I bought it, but I think I just really like color. But, um, so I'm not going to continue this for sixth grade. I think I'm just going to get another, just very, like a visual illustrated book, either on the oceans or just world, some type of world geography. And I have a couple in my Amazon cart I'm looking at. So yeah, so I'm just going to continue with just a simple book. And we're not going to do anything, you know, elaborate. So yeah, so that's for geography. Okay, so now art. Okay, so we do art every single day. Because I really simplified art also as she got older. Because now she's doing so much art in her free time. This is 365 days of art. And this is just really simple. It's just really quick, simple projects. And honestly, I really think we're just gonna continue doing something simple like this for sixth grade. But I think I'm gonna focus on, we're gonna focus on drawing for sixth grade because this was like a variety of materials, but mainly like a lot of color pencils and markers and just really kind of simple exercises. Some of them we skipped, but not many. I skipped it. This was like calligraphy. I really, we didn't really have a calligraphy brush pen either. And I didn't buy one just for this. So I just was like, okay, we're not gonna do the calligraphy stuff. But yeah, so she definitely won't finish this by the end of fifth grade, but I'm gonna give it to her. So she can just do it every day for fun, like in the summer in her own free time so she can finish it. But yeah, we definitely won't have enough time to finish it because it's like the whole year. And I thought about continuing it for sixth grade, but I kind of like to start fresh each year. That's just, I think it kind of just motivates us to like, this is a new year. You know, that's why a lot of times when we have extra stuff, I just have her do it in the summer or I just like let it go. But yeah, so this is art. And then um, I bought this to go with it. Now I will say, I regret buying such a small pad. This is only five and a half by eight and a half inches. And I do regret buying a small pad. I think her and I both, now I personally like to draw small, but she prefers like larger. And I could, I could, and it's not that I couldn't just buy a bigger pad, but like I'm, com once I buy something, I feel like committed to it every once in a while. And like, I'm just like, okay, we're just going to continue using it. Oh, I need to put that back on there. It came off. Okay. 
But this was just something I was like um, a way to get a little bit more um, personal projects in, you know, and then sometimes if she does something in that book, I'll have her do an example here. So I really like she did this collection of, of portraits of our whole family. And this was something she expanded on from the book. This was like a still life. So she did my uh, her great grandmother. <laughs> she did me. She did her dad. Our cat. And then our other little Chihuahua Sid, Chihuahua Mix. And then she for she I was like, oh my gosh, you're missing Sully. We have a catahoula named Sully, and she said she um, messed up, and then she forgot to redo it. So I'm gonna have her do that this week. Um, but yeah, and here's like an eyeball. I'm going to have her do my catahoula. But yeah, so I just have her do random stuff in here. Nothing elaborate. Um, what I will say, though, is my goal for the end of fifth grade is I want to have her do some larger watercolors. Um, and so that's why I was kind of mentioning to you guys. I do prefer like 9 by 12. So we do have other sketchbooks that are like her personal sketchbook. So I think I'm just going to get some of those get borrow a few sheets of paper from those or something like that and like have her do some more some, a little bit more stuff with paint we also have like soft pastels oil pastels so i think i might her have her have her experiment a little bit more with like our art um materials for the end of fifth grade and then still do this but yeah so art's gone pretty well and like i said for sixth grade i think we're going to continue with a book similar to that and then um drawing focus okay so that's pretty much what we do monday through friday because she does art monday through friday also and then on fridays though the i told you guys we don't do history science or language arts on fridays but she does these few things i'm going to talk about so these are her um friday projects so this one is a blank comic book. I told her I wanted her to complete this by the end of the fifth grade year, and she definitely will. And so basically she just started it. It's like um, it's like this little fictional characters and story that she came up with. It's like a fantasy um, book. So she, I told her you have to finish it, and she's gonna go back and add color later. She wants to do the, you know, the drawing first. And so yeah, so she has to finish this. It's one of, I told her, it's like your, project for like sixth grade which incorporates language arts and like drawing and stuff like that and then she'll get to do the cover stuff like that so that's like one of her big projects for fifth grade and then the other things were for friday were units so she was supposed to rotate she does this every friday no matter what for like 20 minutes and then she had to rotate these subjects so the first i did three units one we already scratched one was mythology one's emotional intelligence and one's architecture because she said she wants to be an architect so we got rid of the mythology unit because mainly it was just reading and they had this other evan Moore, i think workbook that we decided to not do anymore um because we didn't really like the projects i showed that and also in that first fifth grade curriculum video so the mythology books, I just added them into her normal, her, her reading rotation. So that, we didn't get rid of the books. We just quit doing a unit. And then the emotional intelligence is this Evan Moore heart and mind book. So first she reads this book, Happy Healthy Minds by um, The School of Life. So she just reads this. I don't give her a time limit. And I don't time her. I just tell her, you know, read a little bit. And her, she has to finish this by the end of fifth grade. So right now she's almost halfway through. So I think she will. It's just all, all about emotions and things like that. Anxiety, patience, um, you know, different things about your feelings. So she reads this every, um, like I said, I think now she does everything on Fridays. Because, yeah, and then she just does um, like a couple pages in this. So yeah, so that's working out really good for emotional intelligence. Now, for sixth grade, um, I'm going to look to see if I can find something similar to this for her. And if not, then I'll probably just um, not do it. 
But um, I like this book, but I'm probably not going to do a workbook. I mean, this is age 10 to 11. I don't think they have a higher one. I think they do have younger ones. Yeah. So they don't have high, a higher grade. Okay. So, yeah. Now she does that every Friday because mythology unit she's not doing and architecture she's not really doing now. We got a variety of architecture workbooks, and honestly, she didn't really click with any of them. Now, a lot of them you need all these different materials. I did I did specifically get a lot of materials for her to use, but then some of them I just need, you know, it's like all these like random things, like 10 LED light bulbs powered by batteries, grass texture, stuff like that. I was like, no, we're not going to... We're just not big project people. So she did a few projects from each of her work, um, architecture workbooks, but she really wasn't that into them. Architecture was a way for me to let her explore what she thinks, even as like a 10, 11 year old might be something she wants to do when she gets older. And I don't, she's still says she wants to be an architect, but I think it's kind of one of those things that's kind of hard to, like, do um, in a unit for, especially, like, I mean, I, like, I took architecture classes um, when I was in college, and a lot of the beginning classes were just, like, lectures, and I had a lot of, like, design classes where they just gave me different projects, very similar to my art classes, and then I didn't get into higher architecture where I did models and stuff like that because I changed my major. Um, I majored in interior design, actually, and then I lost interest in it, <laughs> and I changed my major to art. But so, you know, I think architecture is one of those things where it's just kind of, like, hard to, like, teach. I don't, so I'm okay with the fact that we kind of just, I don't know, like, these workbooks didn't really work for her. So, yeah, she still says she wants to be an architect, but I don't. I don't know. I told her, I said, like, give it time. Like, you obviously have a lot of time to decide. But now she's talking a lot about, like, being an illustrator. And I told her, and that was another avenue I went down. I actually had a picture book that was almost published. And then the publisher, I had a contract. And then the publisher got sold to another publisher. And then the new publisher decided not to go forward with my book. So, I went through that whole process for years of making dummy books and submitting work to publishers and agents and, you know, uh, hiring editors and things like that. You know, like cop like people to do, like, I'm terrible in grammar and stuff like that. But, like, I went through this whole process for years. And so I know a lot about it. hard to get your work published and stuff like that. I'm not trying to persuade her not to do it or anything like that. But, like, I really want her to like pick something also like if she wants to be an illustrator she can still do it in her free time you know like she doesn't have to she's not interested in like majoring in like say English like she's more interested in like illustration not graphic design though but like so yeah so I'm thinking you know what for so for sixth grade I think I'm just gonna like buy her some books on like um authors author illustrators and like kind of have her explore like illustration a little bit more and then like let architecture kind of sit aside and then of course whatever major she chooses I'll be thrilled um hopefully you know of course she'll go to college and stuff like that and so but we kind of did what we could with architecture <laughs> and then um so for sixth grade to make a long story short with all my rambling I'm gonna kind of we're gonna kind of explore like illustration so yeah so, um, is that it? Oh yeah. Reading, reading. Okay. So reading's gone really well. Um, she reads for 30 minutes every day. She also reads in the morning, whatever she wants. So basically for reading, um, my goal for sixth grade is I'm going to focus on class more like classic literature for her because and like not and and also like like modern classics but I'm not gonna buy as much fantasy which is what she primarily reads because she checks out fantasy from the library constantly I buy her fantasy and like when we go to bookstores she buys fantasy she reads fantasy like on weekends I feel like she's getting enough 
exposure and like she she picks it out on her own I don't have to like prompt her to read fancy of course like, so like she's reading a lot of middle grade and, and YA fantasy so I feel like so for sixth grade for like the reading I'm gonna more focus on a little bit more like realistic and historical fiction and classics and then of course in the mornings and in her free time she can read all the fancy she wants um so I because I really want her to read a variety and we're just not that's just not happening it is a little bit I'm trying to try, like trying to get her to read a little bit more variety but she just wants to read fancy so um yeah so I think that's what I'm going to do for sixth grade so all the books on our homeschool shelf will be totally different than the stuff on her book cart, which is her book carts, her personal reading and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that's my goal for sixth grade. So thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. Bye.